orchestral video, you see me in what looks like to be an unassuming industrial estate in Sheffield. I say unassuming because the building to my right is a company called CTL Seal, who are building two brand new steam locomotives, number 72010 Hengeist and 61673 Spirit of Sandringham. Let's go inside and have a look. Here we see Hengeist and here we see Spirit of Sandringham. The Hengeist is actually a British Rail Standard Class 6 and the Spirit of Sandringham is actually a LNER P17 locomotive. Now, during the 1960s, during dieselisation and modernisation, both of these classes were known as uh, extinct because they were all scrapped. However, this project aims to rebuild these two locomotives from the ground up. Let's begin with some history on 72010 Hengeist and history of the British Rail Standard Class 6 clan locomotives. The BR Standard Class 6, also known as the clan locomotives, were built from 1951 and 1952 and were designed by Robert Riddles. The clan locomotive differs from the standard 7 Britannia class in the fact that it had a shortened boiler and amongst another number of weight saving features. This was to increase route availability where these locomotives found themselves on the west of Scotland but it wasn't uncommon to see them as south as Leeds or Sheffield for instance. In total, 10 of these locomotives were built in the crew works. However, another 15 were planned to actually be built. But, considering this is the 1950s, just after World War II, there was acute steel shortages, and the fact that the modernisation plan was to come into force cancelled the rest of these locomotives to be built. However, due to the impending dieselisation and the modernisation plan looming, the 10 clan class locomotives were then withdrawn and then subsequently scrapped, non surviving to preservation. However, in 2017, the project was begun at the Swanage Railway and then was moved to the Great Central Railway before finding itself to CTL Seal in Sheffield. A clan locomotive would be built because it would uh, have the power to reach mainline speeds and keep up with mainline traffic as well as appearing on heritage railways. This new locomotive is going to be built to British mainline standards as well as being built for more efficiency and less coal consumption, which will make it more environmentally friendly in the long run. Currently the smoke box, smoke deflectors, leading bogey, cab and most of the frame has been completed. However, much more work is needed to make this a rolling chassis and the cylinder blocks are currently being cast at the minute and then this will allow for the wheels to be fit. Since 72010 Hengeist is a 462 locomotive this has what's known as a bogey in front of it and here is the new bogey under construction and as you can see an exploded diagram of the wheels nicely displayed for us. Today we are talking to John from the Clan Project who is the head of mainline certification for the project and he will tell us a little bit more about the construction of the locomotive Hengeist bogies. What I've got here really are the main components of the bogey. We've obviously got the two wheel sets but in the middle we have the bogey frame, stretcher, centre slide uh, and the bogey spring cradles. Uh, and that particular part there is the pivot for the bogey, which fits into uh, the, the, the centre side. The, the bow, bogey frame plates, the bogey centre casting. Is this the frame for where the springs are? This is, this, this is the spring crate. This is the are the, this hit here will be a slide for the boat for the site control uh, and taking the weight of the locomotive. And these are known as spittoons in the in days. Okay. And you can see why. And yeah. uh, is this where the bogey bolsters will normally be? Um, yes, the bogey bolsters will, will come on here. If you go and look at the engine, you can see where the bogey bolsters are. Uh, the front of it. And then they locate locate. Uh, the, the wheel sets are 
were made to the uh, relevant British standard for these. So it's a British standard for wheel sets, which we work to, as well as the Main Rhine Railway. The wheel sets were assembled at the South Devon Railway from components which we supply. And the wheel sets will fit into this position here, where you can see the axle box guides. And then this component here, the spring beam, fits on top of the bogey spring cradle, has a cup on it, into a cup which will be fitted here. This is the cab for the standard class 6 clan locomotive, Hengeist, and this is where it would rest on top of the uh, slanted part of the frame at the back, just above the pony trucks, which will be recessed underneath the actual cab itself. In the history of two locomotives, Hengist and Sandringham, uh, we're very honoured here to be with uh, distinguished people in the uh, heritage railway industry. To uh, John Pearson from the Sandringham Group, who has a few words to say. Right, welcome everybody. Uh, we're the newcomers to uh, CTL Field because we only moved here in October 2020 when we were looking for a new home, having started building Spirit Sandingham uh, at Langosville. So we arrived here in 2020. We had a, an excellent. Where's Andy from? Um, we had an excellent um, introduction when we started looking for a home. Brian, Brian Hall, our chairman, and myself came and visited here, what we saw was a fantastic environment where a clean, modern environment where we could build a, a steam locomotive. So we were quite happy to move here and we certainly have been very happy with the welcome from Andy uh, since then. And so we hope, like, like with Hengi, Spirit Sanger will gradually grow uh, in the next few years here, ready for the, the next decade. Thank you. In the world of engineering and steel, and we're very, very proud and honoured to be allowed to be in this cathedral of engineering to build our locomotives in the dry with professional engineers around um, to help us with the project. We're working with you, you're working with us, and we've been here for five years, and it don't seem a day too long. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and as a, as, as an appreciation of what you've done here, which is a very major thing in the world of engineering to allow us to um, build these steam locomotives, we have something that we would like to present to you. So, for what you've done, there we go. So that is, we're going to hand that to you. Yes. This engaged train is travelling over a section of track which will be very soon be built and is built in phases by the Great Central Railway for the reunion project. Mr Tom Ingall will give us some more information. Joining me today is Tom from the, uh, the GCR reunion project. Hello, How are you doing? Hello. I'm good, thank you. So, for those of you who don't know, I was just wondering if you could explain what the reunification means for the GCR. So, the reunification project is a project to reconnect two halves of the Great Central Railway that were separated after the closure of the original closure of the line in the 1960s. At the moment, there are two halves of the line, one in Leicestershire, which is eight miles long, and one in Nottinghamshire, which is nine miles long, but there's 500 metres between the two which are missing. And you can find out why they're missing. We've got all sorts of films on our website, on our G GCR YouTube site, GCR Official, quick plug there. You can find out why the lines got separated and the progress we're making putting them back together. Okay, that's marvellous. I was just wondering as well, what sort of progress you have with uh, the reunification so far? We've put three parts of the project back out of seven. So we've put a new bridge across the Midland Main Line. We've refurbished the original Great Central Railway uh, Canal Bridge, and we have placed the A60 bridge over the A60 road, so the next thing to do is build a section over a local factory car park and a road called Railway Terrace, and we've raised currently, as we speak, in April 2023, £1.78 million towards the cost of the next bit. So three bits done, 
almost £2 million banked for the next bit, so we're really making progress. That's marvellous, thank you very much. And also as well, on, uh, that will be the next piece of the construction. That's it, yeah. I was just wondering when that would commence. Well, it will depend, as always, on money, but we say we've got nearly £2 million banked towards it. We need a little bit more, and we've got to get the permissions in place, all being well either towards the end of this year or start of 2024. That's marvellous as well. I was also wondering as well, what would the benefits of reunification be? Well, we think it can tie communities back together who were separated uh, when the railway closed. You can create a, a heritage railway corridor. People can get on and off trains and explore the attractions of the area. It's a more exciting heritage railway. You're bringing back two very different halves of the Great Central Line. Plus, of course, the South gets a connection to the mainline network. And together, uh, there are perhaps strengths we haven't even considered yet between the two organisations. Uh, volunteers working together, uh, different facilities available for people who want to come and use the railway, for filmmakers, for test uh, people who want to come and test vehicles. Plenty of benefits. Yes, and only just building five miles of railway can create an 18 mile heritage railway. If you want to support the GCR reunification project, I'll leave a link in the description below. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Our second of our new build steam locomotives is number 61673. Spirit of Sandringham, and these were originally built in 1928 by the LNER and were designed by Sir Nigel Gresley. In total, 73 locomotives were built, but sadly, just like the Clan class, all of them got scrapped by 1960 and none of them have survived. So, this is why the Spirit of Sandringham B17 Steam Locomotive Trust have decided to build a new one from scratch. These locomotives were nicknamed Sandringhams, or footballers, but most, most people refer to them as Sandringhams. This is due to the fact that most of them were named after stately manors, and the other half were named after football clubs. I'm not a fan of football myself, but I really do quite like these nameplates, how the actual football actually protrudes from the base of the crest, as well as the colours that it provides as well, which looks very nice indeed. You can see some of the outlying major components for this new build project, which is its uh, bogey wheels. Now, here you can see that the, the yellow petals that look like the petals of a sunflower are the actual filling ports where you would actually pour molten metal into your cast. And these have like vent holes as well, so that um, it vents off excess um, pressure and gas and flames and stuff. And uh, this also shows you a... Uh, what a completed driving wheel looks like. This wheel was cast in January 2022 and is one of the six driving wheels for the locomotive. This here is the tender which will be used for the locomotive Spirit of Sandringham number 61673 and also as well there is a spare tender as long as the tender frame. This was rescued from the scrapyard and is actually original to a B17. Even though no current B17 locos actually survived the cutter's torch, this one actually still survives. The tenders are used to carry coal and water for long distance steam locomotives in order for them to keep going on the main line. The goal is, is that after the build of 61673, the tender will also be restored to fully working condition. Also in attendance of the event is the Chesterfield Model Engineer Society who have kindly demonstrated a stationary steam engine uh, as well as a Mamod mill set as well as the Gowrie locomotive new build project which aims to build a two foot narrow gauge single fairly locomotive as well which is a, a very interesting project indeed also but here is a five inch gauge model of the uh, version. I actually really enjoyed going to this event today. It was uh, really quite interesting insights onto the new build of the steam locomotives. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Much thanks to the people who have so far. It really means a lot to me. Uh, there will be a lot more canal and heritage rail content coming up in due course. See you soon. An interesting comparison where the modern meets the tradition. In this sense, this is the tradition of the builders plate.